Hey YouTube, are you wanting to know how to start a career in cybersecurity? Well, if so, you're in luck. My name's David Staples, and that's today's topic coming right up. So today we're going to talk about how to get started with a career in cybersecurity. So before we get started, I do have to thank CompTIA for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And thank you to all you guys who are watching as well. Uh, all you guys watching and CompTIA and these types of sponsorships are the reason that I'm able to do things like what you see here. And I know it doesn't look like much, but surprise, we recently bought a new house and what you see here will turn into my office slash YouTube studios. It's because of people just like you watching right now that have made these things possible. So really just want to say thank you to everyone, uh, but especially thank you for CompTIA for sponsoring this particular video. Now, even though they've sponsored the video, they haven't told me what to say. So all the opinions you see here are expressly my own. Uh, they haven't given me any talking points or anything like that. But on to today's topic, how to get started with a career in cybersecurity. Well, of course, one of the first and most important things with cybersecurity is that you need to understand how computers work. You, know, you can't very well hack into something or protect something if you don't know how it works. And this is something that I mentioned in my Security Plus and other classes as well, in that you know, people come in and they want to get started into cybersecurity, but they don't have a computer background. So really one of the best things that you can do is to actually get started with learning how the computer actually works. Because once you understand how it works, then you can discover, here's the vulnerabilities, here's the weaknesses, and we can discover how to actually get past those types of things. So if you haven't been working with computers long, you may want to consider looking at something like the A plus course or the Network Plus course. Build a really good understanding of how the internals of the computer work, but work your way on up into the software side of things with the operating systems. Uh, don't just limit yourself to just Windows. Uh, Windows is great to know. But you also want to learn things like Linux and Unix and uh, any other things that you can expose yourself to as well. Uh, when it comes to networking, you know, don't just stop at just a basic network configuration with the consumer router and maybe consumer switches or any other types of devices. Uh, you know, maybe work your way on up into the Cisco world and look at all the different types of things that are involved with making networks work, making data move across these networks. Once you have that skill set and you've kind of broadened your horizons there, you'll be able to develop a much better understanding of how cybersecurity itself actually works. Now, once you've got that basic understanding, keep on building on that. Start playing with different distributions of Linux. Start looking at things like Kali Linux. Kali Linux is a great little hacker's toolkit. I know some people consider people that use Kali as basically just kind of script kitties. In other words, people that only really know how to use the pre-made tools. But there are some things that Kali does really well. And I'm not going to sit here and reinvent the wheel when I've already got a tool that will do part of the job for me. Now keep in mind that cybersecurity is a really broad field. Uh, so there's a bunch of different things that you can specialize on. So one of the things that some people look at is things like physical security. In fact, I've actually even got a little lock picking toolkit right here that I usually demonstrate in the security classes that I teach. So with two tiny little pieces of metal, granted this one's a see-through lock, just as the students can actually see how these little padlocks work. But you stick these in here and just the right way. And without even really looking at it, you know, it shouldn't really take that long to actually pick a little lock like this. And it's actually taking a little bit longer than I normally take. But as you can see, I wasn't looking at the lock. I was looking at the camera here. And getting past these types of things is something that some of the hackers and people in cybersecurity really actually enjoy. And I can certainly see why. Uh, but besides physical security, of course, there's also things like software security and operating systems. You've got getting past routers, breaking into IoT devices or Internet of Things. Uh, so there's a bunch of different things that you can do to get into cybersecurity. Uh, one of the things I typically recommend is learn a programming language. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, if you want to start with something simple, maybe look at something like JavaScript or VBScript. Uh, definitely some very good foundations of learning the basics of programming. Uh, I happen to be a PHP fan myself. I tend to like writing PHP. Uh, but I do also write JavaScript and VBScript, and I also teach a VBScript class uh, in addition to a VBA class, so that's Visual Basic for Applications. If you've ever seen kind of the back-end interface to Microsoft Excel or Word or PowerPoint, they have this interface that you can actually go in and write code to be able to do all sorts of different things. And that's where things like macro viruses and you know those little warnings that pop up if you've ever opened a, 
Excel spreadsheet that says, you know, beware of uh, potentially malicious code. So that's the type of area that you can go in and actually look at that type of thing as well. So learning a programming language can certainly be very helpful. On the job experience is another really good thing. Now, you don't have to start directly in cybersecurity if you're looking at a career in cybersecurity. In fact, it's a really good idea to kind of get some hands on maybe at a help desk, uh, you know, maybe at a local small computer shop and really spend some time getting to know the inner workings of how computers actually work. Uh, from there, you can always move up into that cybersecurity field. You know, if you're perhaps young enough and you don't necessarily feel like college is right for you, you may want to look at something maybe like the military. The military has a lot of opportunities in cybersecurity. Uh, whether you're talking about the Army or the Navy or the Air Force or Coast Guard, uh, I've taught people in all those branches. Uh, I haven't really done anything with the Marines yet, but hey guys, if you're in the Marines and you'd like for me to come out to one of the bases where you're at, I'm happy to, to do so. Just feel free to contact me here. But I've been to a bunch of other military bases where we talk about all sorts of different type of cybersecurity topics. Now, obviously I can't talk about the details here, but there are definitely cybersecurity groups within at least the Air Force and the Navy and other branches of the, the U.S. military. So that might be a good option for you. Now, of course, getting certified is also another very good step in starting a career in cybersecurity. Uh, you can look at things like the Security Plus certification from CompTIA. They've also got the Cybersecurity Analyst certification, as well as the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner certification. So those three have been around for quite a while now. Uh, the Cybersecurity Analyst is the newest out of those three. Now, there's actually a new certification coming out July 31st. It's the Pen Tester Plus certification. So that's coming out July 31st, 2018. Uh, so I haven't seen the exam yet because it's not out, but I am definitely looking forward to seeing the exam here very, very soon. Now, of course, beyond CompTIA, there are other certifications out there as well, but there's so many of them. So maybe we'll talk about those in another video, but the CompTIA ones are definitely a very good one to get started with. Starting off with maybe your A+, Network+, Plus, Security+, Plus, on into your Cybersecurity Analyst, and even the Pen Tester Plus when it comes out, and then on to your CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner, which is their mastery level exam. That's the highest level of security that they offer. And each of those different exams focuses on different parts of cybersecurity. So one of the things that I have students ask a lot of times in classes are, are the certifications really worth it? Well, absolutely, because you know, when you're looking at jobs, you know, typically what happens is that the hiring manager sends the job requirements to your HR manager. The HR manager kind of filters through and they're looking at you know, stacks of resumes. And if you've got two comparable candidates and one has this exhaustive list of certifications and the other person has nothing, well, which one do you think they're going to send on to the hiring manager for an interview? As well, since the CompTIA certifications do have the performance-based questions where you actually have to show that you actually know the material, it shows potential employers that you do have the skill set to do whatever the job they're hiring you for. And someone like CompTIA that's been around for over 20 years is really a good place to start for getting certified in the cybersecurity field, which is one of the reasons that I teach so many CompTIA classes. Again, I teach everywhere from the A plus on up through the Network Plus and Security Plus and Cybersecurity Analyst and the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner. I teach the Linux Plus and really pretty much almost every certification that CompTIA has come out with. I think my current count of certifications is somewhere around 26 or 27 or so. I guess I've kind of lost count. I'd have to sit here and count that over again. But CompTIA is a really good one to start with. And if you want to specialize from there into you know moving on to the Cisco world or if you want to move to the Microsoft world, if you want to move specifically into different distributions of Linux, there are Red Hat exams and other exams for different distributions of Linux. And you can show potential employers that, you know, even if you may not necessarily have on the job experience with some of these types of concepts, that perhaps you may still have the skill set because kind of like a college degree, you've been able to kind of show that you are able to uh, pull this information out of your memory and be able to demonstrate these types of concepts. So if you're interested in more information about the CompTIA certifications, be sure to go to certification.comptia.org. I've got a whole bunch of links down in the description below for the video, so be sure to check all those out. And again, I want to say thank you to everyone for watching. Be sure to show a little love and click on that like button. It helps YouTube know that you actually like the video. Leave a comment below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to click on that subscribe button like so many others have. But again, I do appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video. You guys take care. We'll see you soon.